98% humidity is not the day to do engine experiments, but we're about to rip this engine apart and do a full cheater stock build on it. And I've been wanting to test this theory for quite a while. Now, the theory is whether I can or cannot run twin tachometers. And here's the idea. The problem is I need to launch this at about 5,500 RPM and then I also need a shift indication that's going to go off and give me a light so that I'm not having to go and try and stare and read a tachometer while I'm going 40 miles per hour on a lawn tractor. So if this was a twin cylinder, this would be easy. You would buy one of these with a rev limiter red light on it. You'd put one on one cylinder. You'd put one on the other cylinder and you'd be all set. You'd have one set so that it turns red when you hit your launching RPM. You'd have the other one set so it turned red when you hit your shifting RPM. Pretty simple. What we don't know is whether two tachometers will work on one coil on a single cylinder. So what we've done is we've dialed in our throttle so that it should sit at about 5,000. We have dialed this in so it should do a shift indication at about 4,800 or so. We're going to run this one, make sure that it's coming up to the 5,000. Then we're going to wire this one in. We're going to make sure that the wires do not overlap each other in any way, shape, or form. And we're going to see if it'll come back up through the way it should. Pretty simple. All right, let's zoom you guys in and let's see if we can set a baseline here. So as you can see, this actually catches something off of the engine and starts to move around. Now we're going to wire this up on the lower part of the coil and we're going to see what happens. Now RPM sensor tachometers, they all say to wire as close to the spark plug as possible. We're going to see if there's any indication of differences now. Here we go. Let's play ball. In order to give this the best chance of working, we've got one routed around this side of the engine. We've got this one routed up and over this side. We've got about that much distance between the two on the coil wire. So we're going to start it up. I'm going to zoom you guys in. If this works, we should see about 5,000 on here, and we should see this turn red at 49.
Well, I've got to review the footage, but I'm pretty sure what I saw during that was this one was delayed by at least two or three hundred RPM versus this one. And so if the spark is going out through, this one would see it going through first, this one would see it going through second. But the real reality is I don't know why there's such a difference between the two of them or whether they're feeding off of each other and one is killing off the other one. I think we'll try it. At this point, I think most of this is going to be a run-it-by-feel experiment when we put the twister cam in anyway. Because the twister cam really honestly is not going to get us anything more in the RPM. What it's going to gain us is more torque in the 2000 to 4000 range. And that's what this machine is massively missing when we go off the line. So at this point, I'm not going to call this a success, but I am going to call it a potential future use. Knowing the fact that there's about a 200 to 300 RPM difference, I can easily just adjust my launching RPM and still continue to set this to go and be a shift indicator at whatever RPM this thing ends up being happy at. There we go. We'll include a clip for the people of you should lose your starter in order to lose weight. We've got Duramax 440 starter assembly. 4 pounds, 8.5 ounces. GX340, GX390. 6 pounds, 6.4 ounces. Yeah, you can feel the difference when you pick that thing up versus when you pick that thing up. And also, I mean, let me just set these beside each other. You can see the difference.